Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series, Dreamcast Dreamland, where I take a look at some of my favorite Dreamcast games of all time, but today we're doing something very different. I'm going to explain how the Dreamcast didn't have to die, and it's going to be a very scientific formula with dates and details to match. But here's the thing, I absolutely love the Sega Dreamcast, but it failed at market. It was only on the shelves for two and a half, three years tops, and then it went away and took Sega out of the console hardware business with it. But that didn't have to happen, and I have a very good reason as to why. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But the Dreamcast was an absolutely spectacular console that came out at a really weird time where Sega was struggling, and obviously this was the last hurrah. If this didn't succeed beyond what they needed it to, they were not going to be able to put out another console, and obviously that's what happened. Sega went third party, and we haven't had any Sega hardware since then. We have to look at the timeline first. The Dreamcast came out in Japan on 11-27-1998, and it was discontinued on January 1st, 2001. It's not a really long run whatsoever, which is unfortunate, but what if it had come out on November 1st, 1996? And I know what you guys are thinking, how is that possible? The hardware wasn't ready. Well, here's what we need to do. We need to turn the Dreamcast into a 3DO M2. If you haven't seen my channel before, you know I love the M2 and I've been collecting everything for it. But Sega almost purchased this hardware, and I'm going to go into much more detail later on, but I want to give you guys an idea of how I can make the Dreamcast succeed and actually compete against the Sony PlayStation 2 when it comes out. But let's go straight to the timeline and check in. So in late 1995 and early 1996, Sega is looking at buying the 3DO M2 technology, and it is ready to go. How do I know that? Because this prototype console was made in early 1996 and is 90 99% of the way done. So let's release a new Sega console on November 1st, 1996 using the M2 technology inside of it. It's going to beat whatever's on the market currently and that's going to give Sega a head start. You'll see here on November 1st, 1999, we're going to release a new Dreamcast M2 console because in 1999, the M2 spec was capable of having DVDs. So we're going to put DVDs into a games console on the market before the PlayStation 2 ever has a chance to launch. And I know what you're thinking, M2 is not as powerful as Dreamcast, but if we go with 3DO, we have a path forward and we'll explain that a little bit more. But the question is, what are you losing by going with M2 compared to Dreamcast? Well, if it's in 1999, a lot, but if it's in 1997, nothing whatsoever. The only difference in spec is that we're dealing with a CD-ROM drive versus a GD-ROM drive, so we're losing about you know, 300 megabytes of storage space. Totally easy to work around. Not every single Dreamcast game even used all the space on those discs, so we're not really losing as much as you would think with the change to a standard media like CD-ROM. And the nice thing is, based on the FC35, we have all the same inputs. The 3DO M2 can handle VGA out at 620 by 480. We're not losing anything whatsoever input or output wise as far as that video signal is concerned. This M2 can even have a ethernet port put into it so we can do online gaming perfectly fine. And because M2 was an expandable spec, within the 1998 to 1999 time frame, it was expanded to take a DVD-ROM drive. So now we can play DVDs on M2. And I know what you're thinking, well that's great and all, but the M2 is still not as powerful as Dreamcast, and that is certainly true. Putting them side by side in a comparison, the 3DO M2 can put up about 500,000 polygons per second with all effects turned on, with the system running at about 60 frames per second. Now, what do we do when we compare that against the Dreamcast? Well, with all effects turned on, we're dealing with about 3 million polygons per second. That's a six time increase in the processing power of the Dreamcast as far as the visuals are on the screen, or we're losing 16.67%. That's all the M2 can do against Dreamcast. But let's see what that looks like. And trust me, as I move forward, I'm going to explain why we actually don't lose any power whatsoever compared to Dreamcast when we look at M2. But taking a look right here at House of the Dead 2 on the Sega Model 2, it looks really nice. I mean, you can't deny that the Model 2 arcade hardware was pushing out some really good visuals for the time frame. But if we take a look at something like Evil Knight on the 3DO M2, it is extremely close. And people could 
to be playing these games in their house in 1997 if we release the console when I discuss talking about it. This looks really nice. Now if we put them side by side, you will see that we're talking about like 75 to 80 percent of the visual power of what Sega was doing with their Model 2 hardware, which is clearly before Model 3 and even before Dreamcast. This was still around the Saturn era. But if you're playing this in your house, you would be very happy looking at it. Of course, it's not a perfect comparison, but it's as close as we can get. But if we compare how Evil Knight to the House of the Dead on the Saturn, had you put House of the Dead on the M2, you would have had a hell of a lot better looking version of that game compared to what we got on the Saturn during the same time period, give or take about six months. But I know what you're thinking, there's different genres on Dreamcast. So how about Metropolitan Street Racer here? It looks absolutely amazing. It's a super fun game. I love it. I wish they would continue the series. But you can see here on Dreamcast, it's running at a great frame rate. There's a really nice draw distance. All the texture work looks really nice. What do we have on the M2 to compare against that? Well, we have IMSA Racing. This game is not done. This is a beta. It's not finished. And while it is not as good looking as the Dreamcast, it's still like 75 to 80% of the way there. But what if I told you there was a way to release a new Sega console in 1999, the same time the Dreamcast actually came out, and have it be as powerful, if not slightly more powerful, than what Dreamcast could do with a DVD-ROM drive? Wait a minute, I'll get into that shortly. But taking a look here at Battle Trist, a 3D fighting game. Now the backgrounds are static 2D images, but the scaling is nice, the sense of depth works really well. But of course, it can't compare to something like Dead or Alive 2 on the Sega Naomi. And that really is getting into the question, how are we closing the gap to have Sega release another console in late 1999 with a DVD-ROM drive and the same, if not more, power than the Dreamcast? And we do have an answer to that. But if you put them side by side, it's still a really close fight. Of course, the M2 can't keep up because it is much earlier technology, but it really isn't that far off. And if you consider this was the first round of games Konami released, no one had really tapped the full potential of the system. And if we put it against Virtual Fighter 2 on the Sega Saturn, the M2 is definitely taking the edge. So if we were to put Virtual Fighter and Virtual Fighter 2 on a Sega console during the Saturn era towards the end, we would have arcade Model 2 near perfect conversions. But I know what you're thinking. How do we get the Dreamcast games looking like Dreamcast games in 1999? Because I've clearly shown that M2 was not anywhere near as powerful as the Dreamcast. Well, there's a really easy way to do that. The 3DO M2 was not the final piece of technology that 3DO had on the workbench. What we have in 1998 is MX. That is the 3DO M2, the newer revision. And that can on paper do 5 million polygons per second with all effects turned on. But even if 3D is overstating this, let's say it can do 3.5 million polygons per second with all effects turned on. It can do this in 1998, and that is 500,000 polygons more than Dreamcast could push when it was doing its best. And we're able to put a DVD-ROM drive into this console. So now we have in 1998 to 1999 a system that's more powerful than Dreamcast that also supports a DVD-ROM drive for DVD playback. So now Sega can get into the home market with a DVD player before the PlayStation 2 ever launches. And we know that a lot of the adoption rate for the PlayStation 2 wasn't just that it was a new console from Sony. It's also the fact that it allowed to watch DVD movies at home because in 98, 99, DVD was taking off and a lot of people were buying it, but it was still a new technology. But we've covered how to release a Sega console that's more powerful than the Dreamcast with a DVD ROM drive, but what about Naomi? We have an arcade platform that Sega released a ton of good games for that have become classic. Well, that's really easy because the 3DO M2 also had an arcade board. Sega could be releasing arcade games on the M2 technology in 1997 and 1998 while there was a home console that could match the power and you could port games over to. And MX could have easily had another arcade revision as well for the Naomi. How close was Sega to doing this? Incredibly close. I'm not just conjecturing. Articles here. Matsushita and Panasonic were trying to sell the M2 to Sega to get out of their investment, and Sega almost purchased it. But before that, in 1995 and 1996, 3DO had meetings with Sega. I know this from people that worked at the 3DO company that were in those meetings. Sega walked at the last possible minute to buy the 3DO M2. But how close were they really? Well, here's a game for the Sega Saturn, Digital Dance Mix Nami Amaro. I only own this for one reason. 
And that's because when M2 was cancelled as a gaming platform and shown off as a kiosk device, three games were showing running on the hardware. One was a Dolphin Demo, one was a Shmup, and the third one was Digital Dance Mix Nami Amuro. Sega had been developing for the M2 so far into the future that they actually had a demo to show and let Panasonic use when they were trying to sell the M2 as an internet appliance. And that's how close Sega got to using the 3DO M2 technology in their home console. If you release a successor system to the Saturn in 1996, in the fall, we know the hardware is done because that beta console on the left is from early 1996. Sega's got a more powerful console on the market. Then you take MX, which was ready in 1998, release that in the fall of 1999 or even January of 2000, and you have a system that's more powerful than Dreamcast that has a DVD-ROM drive in it to compete against the PlayStation 2. And if that DVD adoption helps Sega get into more living rooms, that is how the Dreamcast succeeds. That's how Sega continues to make consoles. I hope you've liked this little tour of mine. It's a lot of fun to talk about this stuff. Do me a huge favor, go down below and hit like, subscribe, because I just proved that Sega didn't have to die. Bye-bye. <laughs>